and also with you. And good morning and welcome to our service on this beautiful, sunshiny, crisp, cold Christmas morning. A different sort of Christmas day than perhaps we're used to, partly because of the weather, because often it's really drink, isn't it? It's really grey and, uh, and drizzly, but it's great that we've actually got some sunshine. And a special welcome to those of you who are joining us online. It's great to know that you're out there, and a welcome also to those who are here at St Andrews. And at this time where so many people are separated from those that they love, I think our prayer of unity becomes ever more important. So we're going to begin our service by saying that together. Almighty and everlasting God, as we come together as your church, the body of Christ, we thank you that we can worship you together, even if we are not in the same place. We thank you for this opportunity to pray together and remember each other at this time. Thank, Thank you, you that, that you have brought us safely to this day, and we ask that you keep us from danger. Guide us in all that we do, and may what we do be righteous in your sight. Bless us now, we pray, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I bring you good news of great joy. A Saviour has been born to you. Hallelujah. And the first thing I'm going to do is light our Christmas candle. Today we light the candle of hope, the candle of peace, the candle of joy, the candle of love and the Christ candle. We have one thing to say today, Christ has finally come. Hope, peace, joy and love have finally come. The darkness of Advent has passed and the light of Christmas invites us into the warm glow of the completed Advent week. As we light this candle, we sit in the knowing and affirming that Christ is here. Christ is now. Holy God, we thank you for the birth of your Son, Christ Jesus, who demonstrates for us the gifts of hope, peace, joy and love. Grant us attentive and inviting spirits to these gifts as we enter the Christmas season. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. A light no darkness can quench. The shepherds kept watch by night. And your glory shone around about them. The darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Let your light scatter the darkness. And fill your church with your glory. We come back to God when we've been wrong, so that we can give our whole heart to God. Celebrate with all our hearts, knowing the relationship is right. God of Father, our Father, you sent your Son full of grace and truth. Forgive our failure to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, our Saviour, you were born in poverty and laid in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit of love, your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call. Forgive the hardness of our hearts. 
Lord, have mercy. The Lord, have mercy. The true light that gives light to everyone has come into the world to all who receive him. He gives power to become children of God. This is Christ's gracious word. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. And in the knowledge of that mercy, we are able to praise and glorify our Lord. As you know, during Advent, we don't say the Gloria or sing the Gloria, but today we are able to say these words. Glory to Christ, Son of Mary, born a child, you are one with us. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to Christ, Son of David, born to rule, you reign in our hearts. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to Christ, Son of Man, born to save, you are the light of the world. Glory to God in the highest. And the collect for today, Christmas Day. Lord Jesus Christ, your birth at Bethlehem draws us to kneel in wonder at heaven, touching earth. Accept our heartfelt praise as we worship you, our Saviour and our eternal God. Amen. 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 Graham is going to bring us our first reading. <coughs> Today's reading is from Isaiah. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you, as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, Every warrior's boot used in battle, and every garment rolled in blood, will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee in Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, 
Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in the manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men, on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them by this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Now I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, we've made it to Christmas Day. I often feel it's a bit of a marathon getting to today. All the preparations start so long ago. But of course this year, those preparations have been subject to constant change. Right up to the very last minute, or so it has seemed. Not so much a marathon, more like an obstacle course, with all sorts of unforeseen challenges popping up front of us. There's been quite a popular meme circulating, suggesting that given the simplicity of the first Christmas, it's okay if our Christmas is just as simple. A laudable sentiment, but I feel a somewhat naive one, given, given the expectations that have built up over the centuries about how we should celebrate Christmas in terms of both worship and in more recent times, the accompanying festivities. Those expectations put great pressure on so many people to try to replicate the cultural expectation of what Christmas should encompass, rather than allowing us to strip back this day to its true focus, the incarnation of Jesus, the light of the world, whose birth was foretold over so many centuries beforehand, yet the world was still not ready. On that first Christmas, no preparations had been made, despite the very clear prophecies that were provided in the Bible. There were no expectations that anything out of the ordinary was about to occur, that the world was about to be changed for all time. This year, has certainly been one out of the ordinary. It will no doubt be primarily remembered as the year of global pandemic. But other important events have also occurred. The election of Joe Biden as the new president of the, new, of the United States. The murder of George Floyd, which led to the rising up of the Black Lives Matter movement. The Extinction Rebellion protests, to name just a few examples. Often, when extraordinary things happen, we remember where we were when we heard about them. I remember my mum telling me that she was washing up at the kitchen sink when she heard on the radio that John F. Kennedy had been killed. I don't know what she was more surprised about, the fact that that happened or the fact she'd also just found out she was expecting me. <laughs> and I'm sure that you too have similar stories about when you heard about something that made the world stop and reflect on the events that led to such news. 
Gradually though, these events recede in our memories, not immediately, but little by little, as those who witnessed such events become fewer and fewer. Eventually they are consigned to the history books. We may still commemorate them, but for how long will that be the case? Will there come a time when they really do just become a few pages in a dry and dusty book? Or maybe even just another Wikipedia page? As someone somewhere once said, today's news, tomorrow's fish and chip wrapping. But however earth-shattering the events that are beamed into our lives by the internet, the television or the radio may appear at the time, none have the significance of that we have just heard about in today's Gospel reading. There is no single news story that has ever caused such radical change and had such a profound effect on the whole world than the birth of Jesus. More than 2,000 years ago, a baby was born in a filthy outhouse in a small community in a far-flung corner of the Middle East. It doesn't sound very exciting, does it? But that is why it really is the most amazing thing that the birth of that baby in that stable, far away in a place that barely made it onto the map, is worthy of our attention, not just for a few hours, a few days, months, or even a few years. It has been worthy of our attention for the past 2,000 years, because it is the most incredible and life-changing event that any of us will ever hear of. And in the most wonderful ways, for the most amazing of reasons, as the angel proclaimed to the clearly terrified shepherds, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. In that sentence, we are made aware of the awesomeness of what is to come. The birth of Jesus is good news about which we should be joyful, and more importantly, is for all people, everyone, not just you and me, or the people who come to church, or the people that say that they're Christians. It's for everyone, regardless of who they are, where they come from, what they do. The fact that God sent the angels to the shepherds is proof in itself that this news is universal. After all, in first century Judea, shepherds were considered the lowest of the low. It was a job that you did if you really couldn't get anything else. Dirty, cold, isolated, and no doubt paying way below the minimum wage. But it was this excluded group of outcasts that God chose to be the first recipients of his message to the world. Not the well-to-do citizens of Bethlehem sitting snug in their homes. Not to the high priests and holy men in the temple poring over the scriptures. No. God sent his angels to the last group of people that anyone would expect. The birth of Jesus is a sign of God's favour to all people. A sign that his utmost desire for the world that he created is that there is peace throughout creation. God sent his precious only son to us so that we might share in that peace. Not just as recipients, but as active participants. We are called, as the shepherds were, to be witnesses to the true meaning of Christmas. To spread the good news of what Jesus' birth really means. And if there was a time when the world needed good news, it surely must be now. As we are faced with continuing uncertainty and fear as this deadly virus continues to mutate and spread. Now, I'm sure that most of us will be glad to see the back of this year, and that is perfectly understandable. The sooner the word COVID becomes a dim memory, the better. Yet, there are some, some things about this year I hope we don't forget. I hope we don't forget the sacrifices that so many have made to keep us safe, to care for the sick, to take away our rubbish, to keep the shelves stocked with food, and I hope that our appreciation runs to more than just clapping people on our doorsteps, but to actively supporting efforts to ensure that everyone who has made those sacrifices, 
Not just the obvious examples are rewarded appropriately and sustainably. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice for us. He died that we might live. He made a choice to be obedient to his heavenly Father, regardless of the consequences for himself. I hope we remember the acts of kindness that have abounded throughout our community and that we seek to replicate them, not because we feel we ought to, but because we want to, and that in doing so, we bring glory to God. I hope we remember to be tolerant and non-judgmental of those who don't fit in with our idea of how people should look or who they choose to love. God chose those who were outcasts in society to be the first witnesses to the birth of his son. If God can do that in the lives of those unsuspecting shepherds, who knows what he might choose to do in our lives. And most of all, I hope we keep on hoping. Hoping for the rollout of the vaccination programme, hoping that those we love stay safe, hoping that as we attempt to follow Jesus in our own unique and somewhat haphazard way, others will recognise that hope that they will see how a life lived with Jesus at his centre is a wonderful life, and that they too will be inspired to accept him in their hearts. Because that is the whole point of today. The presents and special food are lovely, but they aren't essential. Being with our family and friends is wonderful, and not something I think any of us will ever take for granted again. But we are never alone, because God is always with us. Even when we think he's forgotten us or abandoned us, he's right there. We might forget him or abandon him, but he never does that to us, because he's God. Singing carols is a joyous way of praising and giving thanks to the Lord, but he knows that our prayers are just as fervent, whether they are surrounded in song, or simply spoken in the silence of our hearts. I'm determined not to labour the point about this being a different sort of Christmas, because you all know that. But I am going to keep on labouring the point that God is love, that he is with us, and that the light will shine in the darkness, as it did 2,000 years ago, does today, and will forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let's affirm our faith. I believe in God, whose light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never smother it. I believe that on that night in Bethlehem, there was born a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. I believe in the Word who has become incarnate, our very flesh and blood, yet full of grace and truth. I believe in the blessed appearing of the salvation of our God, that is, for the blessing of all people. I believe in his name as wonderful counsellor, Mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his rule and of his unique peace, there will be no end. The zeal of the God of hosts will do this. This I surely believe. Please be seated. As we pray today, I'm very conscious of the need for us perhaps to spend more time than we normally do in reflection, and more time perhaps in the peace and quiet that we are able to enjoy. So there'll be some gaps, and in those gaps I ask you to 
lift to God those things that are on your hearts. Those things that we know he already knows because he knows what's in our hearts and what's on our lips as we speak before we do. But those things that we have a special concern for on this special day. So let us pray. power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son Jesus Christ to hear us when we pray in faith. O oh God, the creator and preserver of all, we pray for people in every kind of need. Make your ways known on earth, your saving health among all nations. And Lord, this day we pray more fervently than ever for health, for healing. We give thanks for all those who dedicate their lives to the care of others. We give thanks for all those who dedicate their lives to finding a cure for those diseases which decimate our world. Not just this deadly virus, but also those other diseases, those other illnesses, which rob your people of their health. We pray for those needs that only you know of, those challenges. Lord, we lift to you those who are on our hearts, and we pray for their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for your church on this day when we celebrate the news of your son's birth. We pray for those who are feeling excluded from that worship. We give thanks for the technology that enables us to reach out. But we think especially of those, Lord, who do, have, who do not have that access. Those who may not be aware that you are with them. Lord, we know that all the prayers that we speak into our hearts are heard by you. Let those who perhaps do not have that knowledge know that. That the most simple of prayers is heard by you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our nation. We pray for those who are making decisions that affect so many. We ask that you give them wisdom, that you give them the desire for justice and equity. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we remember those who have gone before us in the peace of Christ. Today, we remember those who we are not with through other circumstances as well. Lord, we pray for the lonely today, those who were planning to be with people and who are no longer able to do so. Hold them to your heart, Lord. Comfort them. We spend a moment praying for those who are no longer with us, but who we remember and we know are with you this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. yeah. our prayer. And Lord, above all, we give thanks. We give thanks that you did indeed send your son, that this baby was born in a manger in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. 
and that because of him we have the hope and the light that shines in the darkness. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them, them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give thanks and praise. <coughs> it is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. At Christmas time we especially give you thanks because for love of our fallen race he most wonderfully and humbly chose to be made man and to take our, take our nature Born as the baby Jesus, growing up, showing us how to live life. Living a life of love in Christ, you shared our life, that we might live in him, 
and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking a cup of wine, he gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for us all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise, and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, Bring us to light and love. Words from St. John. The Word was made flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. The true bread of heaven gives life to the world. Come, all who are hungry, come and eat. Come, all who are thirsty, come and drink.
God, our Father, whose word has come among us in the holy child of Bethlehem, may the light of faith illumine our hearts and shine in our words and deeds through him who is in Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen.
Kyle, happy Christmas.